Are you ever depressed? Yes, I get, I'm, and I think the depressions that I get are almost entirely the result of the Puritan ideals imposed by a Cambridge upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the profound self-punishing depressions that one gets uh, in the intellectual life and the life which comes from Cambridge are due to feelings of having fallen below the goals set by certain phantom goal setters. Mm -hmm. But it isn't that if we ever rang the Miller doorbell that your wife would say, I'm sorry, but Jonathan is locked in the bedroom and can't come out for two or three days. So. Oh, no, I don't think, I don't think that that's... anything like that will happen. Now, what I can do is to put up a fairly passable version of conviviality in the presence of depression. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't think I've ever reached satanic and totally destructive levels of depression, but they've been pretty bad at times, yes. I mean, depression is something, I think, that happens quite frequently. There's a wonderful line, you know, that William James has about depression. He obviously got depression a great deal. In one of his letters, he says that one, the best way to get round depression is to understand that they are the moods of the mind, including these great black moods, are simply like the weather. And one just simply has to take shelter until the clouds begin to part again. And there is a feeling that as long as one sees them as being things which simply happen to the mind, meteorological changes, one simply takes shelter, stands in the doorway, clutches one's raincoat around one's neck and waits until the shower finishes. You're able to work. You're, you're, you've never been... Uh, well, I, can't, I, I can't work during depressions. I do find yeah. that depression slows the handwriting. Mm -hmm. a, a stasis begins to occur. Mm -hmm. occur. And, of course, there is, a, in a way, a spiritual and moral implosion. And you get to the stage rather like a, those sort of dwarf stars. There's been an enormous expansion of energy and ideal, and quite suddenly it all shrinks to a, to a gravitational center of, of infinite density yeah. and tiny extent. Why, as a psychiatrist's son, have you not availed yourself of that science to, uh, to, to help at times like that? Or do you think it w would, in your case, have I've always an influence? felt it was too laborious. And also, I'm, again, it's part of my general pessimism about undertaking measures to help myself mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm I would prefer I would prefer to as it were stand in the doorway and wait for the shower to pass wait it out rather than ask someone to part the clouds for me yeah. but then I think this is in a way it's perhaps is a difference between England and America there is a there is a sort of stoicism about about Europeans a belief that the human the human situation is pretty bad anyway um, and that it can't be put that much righter than it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that America is much more based on the expectation that things can be fixed. Mm -hmm. You know, the moods, uh, talents, uh, social situations can be fixed. They can be put right. Mm -hmm. Effort can be put in and results got out. Mm -hmm. There's a sort of stoical uh, nihilism which is part of the European idea, which says, well, it's a wreckage. <laughs> um, you know, fi find some shelter somewhere, yeah. huddle under the rafters and wait until that lot's blown by, mm -hmm. wait till the soldiery has raped and pillaged this village, and then you'll find some sort of life for yourself in the wreckage. Yeah. Who was it who said, I, I think I heard you quote it one time, that life is, if you admit that life is horrible, 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 then you can begin to enjoy it. That's Bertrand Russell. Yeah. Well, this is Bertrand Russell. Yes.